in a galaxy far, far away. time Star Wars fans and Indiana Jones fans have felt Kathleen Kennedy was inserting herself into the franchises via British brunette landed gentry avatars and let's go through this because there's an interesting thing going on here Ray Palpatine okay played by Daisy Ridley who is uh landed gentry herself uh, she comes from a British upper-class background, gag me with a spoon. As an American, that is an affront and an insult to me. Um, Fiona, uh, Helena Shaw, a.k.a. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, uh, I think is probably almost worse than Ray Palpatine, but maybe not quite, I'm not sure. Both are plain flat as a board, upper-class British brunettes who are very smug, very obnoxious, and think a lot highly of themselves, and both are Mary Sue's to the max. Jen Erso, uh, she isn't really a Mary Sue, but she does, I mean, she's the best fighter you've ever seen in your whole life. Again, played by a plain British brunette, upper-class actress. And, you know, it's not hard to make a connection between Kathleen Kennedy and these actresses because she's a plain, tall American brunette. So who is the least favorite Jedi? And I can't remember the YouTube channel that put this up, but I think this is from YouTube. Luke Skywalker gets 8%. Keanu Mundi, 6 But look who gets 71%. Ray Palpatine or Skywalker. Um, what does this say? This says that the main character in the Star Wars sequel trilogy is unimaginably unpopular. No one likes her. No one, no one cares about her. Again, she's a Mary Sue. She didn't need to be trained. She's a smug, flat as a board, British two by, two by four, vegan moron, okay? You know, she does the whole, if I, if, if I say what I am, I am, kind of thing like, you know, trannies do. And she buries Luke and Leia's uh, lightsabers in the sands of Tatooine and picks up what looks to be Ahsoka's lightsaber because it's white and basically calls herself Ray Skywalker. She should call herself Ray Palpatine because that's who she is. This character assumes an identity she doesn't deserve. She didn't earn it. She's literally from the bloodline that was directly opposed to the Skywalkers in every way you could think. She is absolutely part of the darkness. Uh, the fact that they tried to take away the Chosen One uh, kind of label away from Anakin because he's a tall, blonde, white man and give it to the daughter of one of Palpatine's clones is disgusting. But it's because, again, Kathleen Kennedy's avatar. Kathleen Kennedy is a resentful woman who literally went out of her way to insult and condemn George Lucas in both franchises. No, all three. Willow, too. Okay. Drunk Deadbeat Dad Han Solo, Drunk Deadbeat Dad Mad Mardigan, and Jake Skywalker, because they were white men, okay? And Leia being a white woman in love with a white man, she gets set aside, okay? She gets marginalized as a bitchy Hillary Clinton type, okay? That, you know, 2016 proved how popular Hillary Clinton was, okay? That's what we're dealing with, is someone 
who cannot accept herself. Okay, so let's go to talk about what they should have done. Unwise to lower your defenses. So, at the end of Return of the Jedi, we saw the closing of one chapter in the heroes' lives and the beginning of a new one. And of all these guys, Luke Skywalker is probably the one with the most pressure on his shoulders because he's the one that has to rebuild the Jedi Order. And at the time of Return of the Jedi, fans were led to believe he was the only Jedi in the galaxy. But as the mythology and lore grew bigger, we learned that there were several Jedi who escaped Order 66, Balin Skull, Quinlan Vos, being two names that come to mind. And throughout the lore, at least in Legends, which is a lot more palpable than uh, what Pablo Hidalgo and the story group ever came up with. Luke struggles. We, we see him struggling in Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, he has to find his way doing this. And that's fine, okay? If you know any Catholic priests who are really holy, even saints like Padre Pio, and St. Peter, uh, St. Paul, they all had personal issues every day. Temper tantrums, all right? Uh, St. Jerome was extremely choleric. St. Benedict was. Um, you know, it's not that they're weak. It's that life is a struggle. And Luke's struggle at putting together the Jedi Order is not anti-Luke. It is growing as an adult and as a man, and as a Jedi. He is the Grand Master Jedi in, in the galaxy. He is the one that is going to set up the academies and the practicum and move forward with creating the Jedi as a non-political peacekeeping force that will go from one place to another, settling disputes and defending the innocent and bringing justice. What he was, what he, what he's afraid of, is them getting too political. By because of what happened with the old old Republic Jedi, Yoda's Jedi, they got too complacent, they got too ingrained in politics, and lost their way. They got too comfortable. As someone who is a person of faith, a person of faith can never be too comfortable. Because that is what leads you away from the from the straight road. Okay, Luke has to follow a straight road with building the Jedi Order. He is the least Mary Sue of any of the Jedi's. Okay, he also, according to George Lucas, becomes the most powerful Jedi in the that that has ever lived. He is the son of the Chosen One. Okay, and it's his job to recreate the Jedi Order in a way that it survives, thrives, and continues. And he has to do things that are not what Yoda would do. They're not what other Jedi would do. But they have to be done to preserve the heritage. And, you know, oh yeah, we've got Ahsoka that survived too, but is Ahsoka really a Jedi? You know, you can say she is, but is she really? It's one of those things where you're kind of looking at her going, yeah, and you said no, so I don't, you know. Um, so this is where the sequel trilogy should have gone. Luke maintaining the Jedi Order, Han and Leia going through, watching their kids grow up, uh, struggling uh, with keeping the provost the provisional New Republic government alive because Thrawn is now back um, with enemies that 
come circling now and then. Uh, this is a, the, the sequel trilogy should be a learning period. It should be another chapter in their, in their life story. And instead we got insulted and were the targets of K Kennedy's resentment through Ray Palpatine, Helena Shaw, and Jen Erso, to a lesser extent. Because, again, Erso is less of a Mary Sue than any of them. Because she does go through struggles. Okay? She does. Uh, and uh, she is a survivor. I will give her that. But as far as Ray, no. She's a terrible character. Okay? This is why Ray is literally the most pop unpopular character in Star Wars. And hopefully, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, no, John Favreau hasn't left anywhere, hasn't gone anywhere, are um, trying to sort this mess out. And Ahsoka will have a second season. Uh, there, The Nielsen numbers were solid. Disney uh, is very happy with them. Uh, Favreau and Filoni are too. And we will see a different kind of thing emerge. It's not watering down the mythology. It's taking the attention away from the really bad shit of the sequel trilogy so they can refashion it to something that the fans won't get pissed off at. Okay, now, will a multiverse make everybody happy? No. But will we see Kennedy's avatars traipsing across the galaxy? No, because they won't be there. Because Star Wars is ultimately about hope, life struggles, overcoming struggles, falling and getting up again, okay? With a lot of theological ideas from Christianity, especially the Catholic Church with the father, son, and daughter, Buddhism, and other Eastern religions, okay? Um, Catholic doctrine is, I might do a video on that, and I am going to do a video on the sag -F after strike later. But I want you guys to understand that hopefully we will get what the fans want. And as soon as the sag -F after strike is over, I think an announcement or two will be made. Um, you know, Kathleen Kennedy is being erased from all of this. You can argue with me about Ahsoka being female-centric. With Balin Skull there, it's not necessarily true because Ray Stevenson has an overwhelming authentic masculinity, okay? And that's what Kennedy's sequel trilogy was lacking because they didn't let Harrison Ford be Harrison Ford in this, and they didn't let Mark Hamill be Luke Skywalker, okay? or Han Solo. They didn't let Harrison Ford be Han Solo in this. So let's get ready and let's celebrate. And remember, Ray Skywalker is Kennedy's ultimate failure because the fans rejected Ray Skywalker completely. Ray Palpatine. Steph signing out. I'll see you around the galaxy.